All right, hello, and welcome back to my RPG. Sorry, 2.5D RPG in Unity tutorial. Today, we're doing the second part of our serialization bit, where we are going to be writing the data we recorded in the last part to a file and then reading it in again. And then next week, we will uh, do that thing where we actually parse the data and use it to recreate the world. So, oh, that's good fun. So, first off, I press play. And just clear that. So if I press uh, tab here, but that's not the right one, I, and just let's add some items to the inventory. So you can see here, we've got water, an assault rifle, bread, antidote, and water. So if we just press I there, and we press T now to serialize stuff. And if we go to this folder here, where I've said it's all right, we'll see that we have a folder called RPG Tutorial. But this will be in a different folder based on where you want to store it. But yeah, so we've got save 001 uh, for the scene Plague Desert. And you'll see we have five folders. Folders? Text files, sorry, for each of the particular bits of data. So first off, I will open that with text edit. And you will see that it's stored the data we kept from the last scene. So we've got the current scene the player's in player's position in the scene, the player's rotation. Uh, I've also added a uh, current weapon serializer. Uh, so basically it just records what weapon the player has and what kind of ammo they have in the weapon. So just so we can reload that as well. I will have to add in a uh, way to serialize conversation progress as well. So that'll be something added next time. Um, finally, we've got the stats bit where we record the health of the player, which is just 999 for just so they can't die in the inspector. And again, the max health, which would be 999, and any effects would be after, but since we don't have any, they're not recorded. And on the next line, we have uh, the player's inventory. So water, assault rifle, bread, and stones of water, like we saw in the uh, actual game. And I'll just do another one. Uh, so let's have a look at the NPC. So we can go to text edit. Uh, just spread this out because it's all over one line and it's a really long line, but you know, it works. So we can see we got NPC PD0, which is the NPC here. So if we click on him, we'll see it's NPC PD0. Uh, we can see that they don't have a weapon equipped, they are positioned at minus 4.7, 2.9. So minus 4.7, 2.9. So it does a bit of rounding, but accurate fish well accurate enough so it doesn't matter uh we can see that they are zero station none uh we can see none i think oh yeah so no weapon minus one none there for i think that's action yeah that's action uh then we've got all the inventory items here so we can see that the first three items are bread water and assault rifle if we look at the inventory again we can see it's bread, water, and an assault rifle. So that would just be the desk weapon. So I've not named it properly. And sorry, I lost a file. And then we can see uh, just the stats of the player, or the NPC, which are 100 health points out of a maximum of 100. And again, we got, uh, like we said the last time, we just got similar data for the containers in the scene, uh, the loose items in the scene, and the quests. I'll just open the quest ones as well. So you'll see that uh, gun shopping has been finished because it has. So yeah, so let's go check out how all that works. Okay, so first off, I'm just going to show you the weapon serializer for well, the best weapon controller. Uh, basically, you just pass in a weapon controller off any object, and it'll return if well if the weapon controller doesn't have a weapon equipped, it'll return no weapon and minus one because you can't have minus one bullets in a gun. Odd. And yeah, so basically that's just a mark that it isn't, it's either like, it could be like a melee weapon that doesn't have ammo, or you just don't have a weapon. Otherwise, it will return the item name. So you once we're reloading that, we add the, we'll basically create an instance of that weapon and add it to the uh, NPC and to equip it. And then we set uh, the current ammo in the mag. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, and then in player serializer, we just get a string, we call it here, uh, from serialization show that me dot per web series. Uh, per web series is just 
the shortened person weapon serializer, which is just this little gap component person weapon serializer, because that's added to the object here, the serialization controller. You see it there. there. And I'll just zoom in because I keep forgetting to. Uh, so, uh, zoom in. Zoom in. And that's yeah. So you can see if you just get uh, just get as another string here, or get the weapon. Uh, sorry, get the equipped weapon information here, and then just shove it into the uh, player data string after the rotation. And we do a similar thing for the NPCs, where. Again, which is a string weapon where we get the serial, we use the serialization control that meet up per weapon Siri, and we pass in uh, get component dot weapon control, weapon controller, and that is just added after is the player dead or not. So yeah, that was it, and let's go back to the serialization controller to see how we write this to a file. All right, so first off, uh, we got a load of new strings. Uh, these first two are called the game directory and save directory. Uh, basically, these will just be the folders in which that the, the saves are written, basically. So my idea was you'll have a game directory to store like a list of all the saves. So it would be, uh, it'll be basically uh, this folder. Oh, I'm sorry. This folder. So uh, if I go into RPG tutorial, it'll be this folder as well. I'll have saves 001, 002, and so on and so forth. Actually, I probably should add like a, a a data text file so you can have some like description on a loading screen, like you're saying where you were and how long you've been playing for, stuff like that. And then the uh, save there is just uh, you to increment that each time so that uh, you get unique save game names and you don't overwrite some accidentally. Uh, next up, we just have a couple of strings so you can set like the uh, actual text file names to be whatever you want. So player file name, NPC file name, container file name, so on and so forth. Okay, I'd love for those vibe there. Uh, that's just uh, so you can allow a little bit of a customization for whatever you want. And you can see we've all set them in the serialization controller here in the inspector. So we've got the game directory, RPG tutorial, the save directory, I've just manually set to 001. But you could probably uh, like create those on the fly by like say looking for directories in the uh, game directory and basically adding one to the count of that and you'll have your uh, number to put at the end to make sure it's unique. Uh, okay. So first off, we call this uh, directory create on awake. What this does is basically it goes through each of the directories we need. So the game directory, the uh, save directory and the uh, current scene directory. And it'll basically just make sure that those folders exist. Uh, we do this uh, first off by. Uh... All right, I'll just uh, cut this up into bits just so I can explain it. So first off, uh, I'll just basically comment that out for a second. So basically, system environment get folder path uh, basically just gets uh, and sorry system environment get folder path. Uh, and you pass in system environment special folder my documents. Uh, this is just a just a way of getting the my document the folder that my documents is in. So if you look to uh, if I just show you in here, uh, you'll see that my documents is in here, and you'll see that my save game folder is also in here. So this is basically just a way of uh, pointing to that particular folder that the documents folder is in. Uh, you could add like slash documents to actually get into the documents folder, which would probably be better. I don't know why it doesn't actually allow you to do that, does it in the first place, but yeah. Uh, the reason we're doing this instead of like typing it in manually is just so, you know, if you were switching platforms from Windows, Mac, Linux, stuff like that, it'd always get like a documents folder. So you'd have somewhere to save your stuff, really. So yeah, so it'll keep it consistent. So, and then uh, we add, plus game day, uh, plus slash, plus save day, uh, just to add like our own folders. Uh, yeah. So we add uh, the uh, path one bit at a time. So first we check the game day. And if that's not there, we create the folder using directory.create and we check it using directory.exists. So 
basically these just uh, you pass in a file path and directory list says whether there's a directory there and create directory will create a folder which is pretty simple uh, we do the similar thing for the save directory and we pass in the current scene as well just to make sure there is actually a folder there so uh, yeah so basically we're storing each scene as like having sorry uh yeah we have like a folder for each scene in the save game so it'll record information about npcs and shit in that scene so once we load a scene we can search for that a folder with that scene's name and we can just load all the data from there so we don't have to search for like one big ass list of all scenes stuff oh uh, yeah uh then we call file initialize uh, this is basically just the same principle, except we are using the uh, file names that we declared up here. Uh, yeah, so first off, we set a current scene there to be, uh, this just a string to the folder path of the current scenes uh, folder that we declared, uh, we checked existed up here. So it's system.environment.get folder path to my documents plus game day plus save day plus the scene name and then we basically do file.exists instead of directory.exists with the current scene data and the different file names plus .txt because we're just going to store the uh, information in .txt files because we're not really we're, you could probably do it in a format and there's probably some better way to do it but I just so decided to go for the simple option because it works and it's not like we're doing some proper competitive multiplayer game where you'd have to sort of keep the uh, data from being edited. But yeah. And yeah, sim simple is best. So basically we just check if each of the uh, different files we wanted to store data in exists already for the scene. And if it doesn't, we just create a blank one. And that's that. Uh, and next up, just on a, as a debug thing, we basically have a, ser uh, if we press T, we have a serialized data method and a read data method, which are both called if T is pressed. So serialized data basically just has a string for the current scene directory, which again is just the uh, documents folder plus game day plus save day plus the current scene's name, the current scene folder. And next we call all the test serialized methods that were in, well, that we used to have bound to T, so they've just been moved to here. And you'll see test serialize, it basically just calls all these serialized methods in the different serializers. So it's got so this one is one for the player, and it'll store the data here. So then we have to go through each of these serializers and get the data. So since uh, the player data is the only one not actually stored in the list, we have to basically declare a two-element string array. Uh, the first line is to store the actual player data. The second line is to store the inventory data. So we shove all that in to the uh, into a file. So we go do file dot write all lines uh, current scene directory plus slash plus player file name dot txt, and we shove in an array called uh, player data that we create here. Yeah. So file dot write all lines. It takes a path and a string array and it'll write all those lines to a text file, which is, you know, exactly what we need. And for the other like serializers, it gets even simpler because uh, lists have a method called dot to array, which converts from a list to an array. So we can call it to serialize, get the list, turn it into array, and then just bang it in the file. And the job would be a good one. So yeah. Uh, we do that for all of the different things. So at this point, we'll have all our uh, data written to files. Uh, this was a different attempt, which I will get rid of now because it didn't work and it isn't needed. And finally, we have the read data method, which uh, basically just for now, it just uh, reads all the uh, data files and just shoves it in a list. So we'll see. Uh, It'll go through each file line by line and then add that line as a string to the data read in list. And for next time, I'll probably divide it up into different lists for, you know, parsing it into the world. So, yeah. So, basically, again, we have a string to the current scene directory, which we, is basically identical to this one. 
I should probably have it as a like variable we can set or whatever. Uh, we declare data read in as a new list. We have a string, uh, just an empty string line. And then we use a stream reader uh, to basically read through the file. And to use a stream reader, you need to add uh, using system.io. And if you're actually to get at the active scene, you need to use uh, Unity Engine management as well. So you add them at the top of the file before you declare your class name and that. And so basically with the stream reader for each of the uh, different data text files, so all five of them, or what will be probably six when we get to the end of it or whatever. So while the line is equal to file.readline is not equal to null, uh, it will data.readin, it will add that line to data.readin. So basically it goes through the file, uh, it'll read the line, and add that line to the list and then move on to the next line. And once it reaches the end of the file, uh, that will be null. Uh, that basically line will be equal to null. So it will know, all right, we're done with the while loop. We can close that file and move on to the next one. So yeah, so basically just read through the file when it reaches the end of the file. So there's no more text, closes the file. And yeah, let's just show you that in action. So if I press T, We'll see under the uh, data read in. I'll just increase the size of the, size of the inspector. So we can see that there are 33 strings lined in. Uh, we can see that we are in the Blake Desert. The player is at 12.8, 5.2, and 0. The rotation is 0, 0, 0. We've not got weapon equipped, and we've got 999 health out of 999. Since the player doesn't have hasn't picked up any items, because remember when we pressed T, it reserialized it, so uh, it got rid of the old data where we did have items. So yeah, and again, we've got it uh, NPC PD zero, where he's at minus four point seven, minus two point nine, well, not minus two, just two point nine, like we saw before, and he's not got an action at the moment, and he's got an antidote, the assault rifle. Uh, etc. 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 Uh, oh, sorry, it's <sighs> And again, we've got information about the containers, like the ID and the items in it. We've got information about items in the world, such as their position and rotation, and what the item is. Uh, finally, we've got information about the quests, which has uh, gone back to zero since we don't have the uh, two items required for the quest. So we don't have any bread or water. And that's about it for serialization. It's quite simple, so I thought I'd divide it into its own episode and keep complex stuff like parsing it for next time, which will be my birthday. So if you want to get me a birthday present, buy my game, Loud or Quiet, which is out on Steam now. Uh, it's like six ninety nine quid, so nine ninety nine dollars. It's like a top down shooter inspired by Hotline Miami, Max Payne, and Payday. So go buy that. Yeah. And check out all my other stuff on itch.io, like the uh, RPG, not RPG stuff, uh, tutorials, and basically stuff from my other tutorials, like the uh, Top Down Shooter, the Retro Crime Game, stuff like that. So yeah, thank you for watching. If you got any suggestions or some shit, just let me know in the comments. And yeah, have a good one.